Hello my fellow miner, today we're going to have a look at LOL Miner version 1.38. The first three changes are all about connections and of little importance when it comes to hash rate. While the last one is important if you have an RTX 3060 or RTX 3070. Change LHR kernel defaults for RTX 3060 and RTX 3070 because the default ones had an issue with defect shares at high overclock. In other words, if you have an RTX 3060 or RTX 3070 and you use LOL miner and high overclocks, this should be better. Unfortunately, this version doesn't work at all for me in Windows. It keeps logging my RTX 3060, which is where my display is connected. Also, when I update to the latest game Ready Driver, it locks all my cards all the time. That of course means that I will only be testing LOL Miner version 1.38 in Hive OS. Now let's have a look at what we are going to test. We are going to test the RTX 3060 LHR version 2, the RTX 3060 Ti LHR, the RTX 3070 LHR, the RTX 3070 Ti, the RTX 3080 LHR and the RTX 3080 Ti. I suggest you watch the whole video before asking about overclock settings for Windows in the comments, as I always show them here. Now let's have a look at the overclock settings for the RTX 3060 LHR mining Ethereum. I lock the core clock to 1552 and the memory to 2600. In Windows set the memory clock to 1300 and use the NVIDIA SMI command to lock your core clock at 1552, as shown here. Remember to run it as admin. Of course, that requires that you can get it working in Windows. Now let's have a look at the overclock settings for the RTX 3060 Ti LHR mining Ethereum. I locked the core clock to 1350 and set the memory clock to 2100. In Windows, use MSI Afterburner to set your memory clock to 1050. Either create a new batch file or add the NVIDIA SMI command to the top of your existing batch file as shown here. Now it's time to have a look at the overclock settings for the RTX 3070 LHR mining Ethereum. I locked the core clock to 11.25 and set the memory clock to 2600. In Windows use MSI Afterburner to set your memory clock to 1300 and add the NVIDIA SMI command to the top of your existing batch file or create a new batch file as shown here. If you like my video, please click like on it. If you want to see more, subscribe. And if you want to help me out, share it with someone. Thank you very much. Now let's have a look at the overclock settings for the RTX 3070 Ti mining Ethereum. I locked the core clock to 930, set the memory clock to 2300. In Windows, use MSI Afterburner to set the memory clock to 1150 and either add the NVIDIA SMI command to the top of your NB miner batch file or create a new batch file as shown here. Now let's have a look at the overclock settings for the RTX 3080 LHR mining Ethereum. I locked the core clock to 1500 and set the memory clock to 3400. In Windows, use MSI Afterburner to set the memory to 1700 and add the NVIDIA SMI command to the top of your existing batch file or create a new one as shown here. Now let's have a look at the overclock settings for the RTX 3080 Ti mining Ethereum. I locked the core clock to 1500 and set the memory clock to 2600. Use MSI Afterburner in Windows to set the memory clock to 1300 and then add the NVIDIA SMI command to the top of your existing batch file or create a new one as shown here. If you ask me in the comments what the overclock settings are, I'll most likely send you a fart. And I'm not talking about one of the nice ones that smells like vanilla cake or something like that. No, a real stinky fart. Non-vanilla edition. Now let's have a look at the final average results for all the cards. First up is the RTX 3060 V2 LHR. 35.7 megahash per second at 105 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0.340. Not accounting for true hash rate, that is a bit slower than NB Miner, and both were tested with the display being connected to the RTX 3060, which I will rectify as soon as they find my motherboard in the mail. Now let's move on and have a look at the RTX 3060 Ti Military Graded Tough Edition from Asus with fantastic rubber banana RAM. No, I'm absolutely not disappointed by this card in any way. Anyway, let's have a look at the hash rate. 43.3 megahash per second at 124 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0 
Now let's have a look at the average result for the RTX 3070. 44.9 MHz per second at 112 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0.401. As always, when it comes to Ethereum Unlock, the RTX 3070 is just the most efficient of them all. But will that change when we have 100% Unlock in the future? Time will tell. Now let's have a look at the RTX 3070 Ti DIY Edition, where you have to add thermal padding yourself. 56.2 MHz per second at 184 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0.305. My bet is on the RTX 3070 Ti being the least efficient of them all, and we have before clapped for it. One day I'll definitely try to change everything on it to see if we can get it to perform a little bit better. Now let's move on and have a look at the RTX 3080 LHR. 74.2 MHz per second at 240 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0.309. Now let's have a look at the final card, the RTX 3080 Ti. 82.9 MHz per second at 264 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0.314. It's the absolute winner of megahash per cable, so 3080 Ti, buy more of those, they are the best. However, there seems to be many different kinds of them in, in fluctuation right now, so some cards are very good and get over 90 easily in T-Rex, and some are very bad and only get 77, and then you have the mediocre version that is mine, which uh, needs higher clock. So if you cannot achieve the same results or better results than what you see here with your RTX 3080 Ti, I suggest you try a core clock of 1220 or 1200 or 1180. If you are so unlucky that you are stuck at around 70 something, 77 uh, is what I hear from most people, then unfortunately there's not much you can do. If I one day get my hands on one, I will try my best to change padding and everything and dissect it completely to figure out why it's stuck at 77. And there are so many people with that problem that it doesn't really make any sense. Now, as you have most likely noticed, g mine and T-Rex haven't been tested uh, by me yet in HiveOS and they will be coming very soon. Until then, let's compare them to their counterpart in Windows and earlier versions. G-Miner is still the most efficient miner of them all, and T-Rex is still the fastest when it comes to hash rate. And that also includes the true hash rate. However, not everything comes down to efficiency and mega hash per second, and you may have another reason to use LUT miner or NB miner or G-Miner or T-Rex than, for example, I do. So, when talking about the different miners, then try to not make it a little bit fanatical like uh, football matches that this team is the best in the world. Try and explain why you find this miner the best and why you choose to use that. Thank you very much, I hope to see you in the next video. If you haven't subscribed, now is the time to do it. If you haven't liked the video, also the time to do it. And then send the video to a pal of yours. Thank you, bye.